Welcome to TPM Vids Disney Beat, where we talk about all things Disney. If you're new to the channel and like what you see, hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to be notified when we upload a new video. You can also find us on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. Walt Disney World is filled with so many secrets that brings all the Disney magic to life. Today we'll explore everything from hidden details to sharing some behind-the-scenes magic like the dangers of the highest-paid Disney character, as well as debunking some commonly talked about myths and secrets, like the true reason why Magic Kingdom only has one real American flag, or if Haunted Mansion was ever supposed to receive the Haunted Mansion holiday overlay. There are so many stories to explore, so sit back as we count down 7 Walt Disney World Secrets. Number 7. Have you ever noticed that most of the restrooms in the Disney theme parks don't have doors? Most are fully open to the outside, except for the restrooms at Animal Kingdom. Here, every single restroom that's accessible from inside the park has a door, and it was done as a security feature. Now, Animal Kingdom has over 50 species of animals in the park. These are real, wild animals, so in the extremely rare case that one of them ever gets loose and escapes their habitat, cast members can usher guests inside the restrooms to take cover. The doors would then be locked, ensuring the guests are safe until the animal is captured and returned back to its home. Now, an animal has never escaped at the park, and hopefully it stays that way. Disney has secretly designed barriers into all the animal habitats at the park. This includes water features, moats, fences, and natural barriers to keep the animals completely separate from guest areas. Take for instance the elephants. They have a six-acre area surrounded by hidden moats they wouldn't be able to cross over. And the lions will never make it over Pride Rock because there's an 18-foot deep and 21-foot wide moat that separates them from the guest areas. Imagineers pretty much thought of everything in regards to guest and animal safety, ensuring the restrooms will never actually need to be used as a shelter. Number 6 did you know that Hollywood Studios and Magic Kingdom have two of the highest paid character roles? Yeah, so in Fantasmic, Ariel is the second highest paid character because of what happens in the finale. Take a look. So you might be thinking, what's going on? Well, since Ariel has a fin and can't walk to take cover in the lower section of the boat, she's covered with a fireproof blanket to protect her from any firework falloff. Remember, safety first. Cast members have given this the nickname of Bagging the Fish, which I think is very appropriate. Because of this, the performer receives hazard pay on top of pay for a normal day's work. Now you might be thinking, why doesn't Prince Eric just carry her off? Well, since she's strapped onto the pedestal to prevent her from falling, they actually need two people to get her off and on, so there just isn't enough time. Also, carrying her down a flight of stairs in the dark is another huge safety hazard. What if she's dropped? So that is why Ariel is covered with the fireproof blanket and the fish gets bagged. Now, the highest paid character is actually Tinkerbell in the fireworks shows at Magic Kingdom. She took flight for the first time in 1985, and seeing her fly has now become such an iconic moment of these firework shows. She's only on stage for about 30 seconds, but this is probably one of the most challenging character roles. For Tinkerbell to get all the way up to the zipline platform, she needs to physically climb a ladder up the spire. Here in this video, you can see there's only enough room for Tink and one other cast member. They help make sure she has enough momentum to make it all the way down the line. Tinkerbell travels about 30 miles across the zip line, and the performer needs to fall into a specific weight range to be able to fly safely and successfully. The weight limit is said to be no more than 95 pounds since she's wearing an additional 70 pounds of harnesses, plus the costume, lights, and batteries. It takes a lot of strength and skill to successfully make it all the way down. Because of all this, the performer is said to be paid a full 8-hour day plus hazard pay, whether she flies or not. Number 5 
staying on the topic of fireworks, they've become synonymous with the Disney theme parks. There's nothing more magical than ending your day with a nighttime spectacular. But did you know the Walt Disney Company is the largest firework consumer in the world? Disney spends approximately $50 million a year to be able to light up the nighttime sky at their theme parks. Here at Magic Kingdom, it's speculated that one performance of a typical firework show costs roughly $40,000 to $50,000 a night. Let's just take the lowest number at $40,000. Multiply that by 365 days, and that works out to be $14.6 million just for fireworks at Magic Kingdom for one year. Then add on Harmonious, plus Pyro used in Fantasmic, the other shows at Hollywood Studios, special events, and every Castle State show, and that number will definitely add up. Now, Florida is notorious for rain, thunder, and lightning. But generally, even during this difficult weather, large-scale firework shows like Enchantment are never cancelled. See, for safety reasons, once fireworks are loaded into the launch sites, they can't sit overnight and they need to be set off that day. So, firework shows might get delayed even if it's by an hour or more, but they're generally never cancelled, since they need to be set off regardless. In some rare cases where the weather is really bad and the show is actually cancelled, they may even set the fireworks off after the park has closed. But again, that's pretty rare. That's also why there's rain versions of Fantasmic and shows on the castle stage, whether it be Mickey's Magical Friendship Fair or the Halloween and Christmas shows. They all use pyro in the finales, so it gives them a chance to set off all the fireworks that are already loaded, plus guess they'll get some sort of show. It's a win-win. Number 4 so you know when you're exiting Space Mountain and you pass by the dioramas on the right-hand side? Well, there seems to be a real misconception online about who this little futuristic dog on the right really is. Many sites list it as Nipper the RCA dog, but that is not true. So back when Space Mountain opened in 1975, RCA was the attraction sponsor and they remained the sponsor until 1993. At the time, RCA's mascot was this adorable dog named Nipper looking into a phonograph. As you entered Space Mountain, there used to be a Nipper figure in the queue, but it wasn't an animatronic. Now, at the end of the ride, the post-show was called Home of Future Living, and here it showcased how consumer electronics would shape our lives at home in the future. It featured a bunch of animatronics, including a dog. Well, in 1985, Disney redid the post-show, stripping all the animatronics down to their skeleton, but they still had movement. Does this look familiar? In 2009, when Disney retooled the post-show once again, this animatronic dog became a static figure in the new scene. So this was never Nipper the RCA dog, and instead, it's just an old, recycled Disney animatronic. It's pretty remarkable, though, how many animatronics we've lost over the past decades. Number 3 you may have heard before that the Haunted Mansion at Magic Kingdom was also going to receive the Haunted Mansion Holiday Overlay. The way the story went was that Disney created two versions of the overlay, but after the fact, Florida decided they didn't want it anymore and instead it was sent to Tokyo Disneyland. But none of that is actually true. So in 2001, Haunted Mansion Holiday debuted at Disneyland. Disney enlisted a company called Garner Holt Productions to create all the show pieces and animatronics for the overlay. Garner Holt Productions is a California-based company that began working with Disney in the late 90s. It started with small parade projects, then Haunted Mansion Holiday was their first big Disney project. But in 2001, Garner Holt only built one version. There was not a second unit of sets and animatronics built for Florida. And this has all been confirmed in many interviews with Garner Holt himself. Instead, what actually took place was once Tokyo Disney saw just how popular Haunted Mansion Holiday was in California, they wanted the overlay for their Haunted Mansion. Tokyo always wants the best for their parks, and they're willing to spend whatever money it takes. So in 2002, Garner Holt got a phone call from Imagineering, and they got to work on building a version of the overlay for Tokyo. Haunted Mansion Holiday at Tokyo Disneyland then went on to debut in 2004. Now, Tokyo's Haunted Mansion does follow the same layout as the ride in Florida, so maybe that's where the whole misconception came from. Plus, in 2001, Disneyland wasn't even sure what the guest's reaction would be with the overlay, so it really doesn't make sense that they would invest money for a version in Florida if they didn't even know if California would be successful. Lucky for them, it was extremely popular. 
It has been said that Disney's never wanted the overlay for Magic Kingdom, since the resort is more of a vacation destination with once-in-a-lifetime visitors, instead of more of a locals park like Disneyland. They want to make sure that no matter what time of year you visit Walt Disney World, you'll be able to experience the classic Haunted Mansion. Number 2 now, you may have heard that the American flag in Town Square at Magic Kingdom is the only real flag on Main Street, and the rest of the flags aren't real. Well, this is only partially true. The flag in Town Square is your typical American flag with 50 stars for each state, then 13 stripes representing the original 13 colonies. According to the US Fly Code, all American flags should only be displayed from sunrise to sunset. So every morning, the town square flag is raised, then at 5 p.m., the flag is lowered during the flag retreat. Now, the flags on top of the buildings on Main Street that are said to be not real actually are real. They just aren't current American flags. If you look closely, each of the flags has 13 stripes, but only 45 stars. See, Main Street is set during the turn of the century, so anywhere between 1890 to 1910. In 1896, the American flag added Utah as the 45th star. So we can come to the conclusion that Main Street takes place during or after 1896 and before 1908 when a 46th star was added for Oklahoma. These flags down Main Street are historically accurate to the time period, but they're not the current American flag, making them not real. That's why they remain up there 24 hours a day and are never lowered, because they don't have to be. And it's all thanks to historical accuracy. Number 1 What's not widely talked about is Disney outsourcing projects to other companies. What you might not realize is that many of Disney's audio animatronics weren't built by Disney themselves. Now, anytime Disney has outsourced an animatronic project, it's always been to Garner Holt Productions. Over the years, they've produced many impressive lifelike figures, like that Abraham Lincoln figure that circled online a few years back. Now, the very first animatronic they created for a Disney attraction was actually Jack Skellington. He was also the first high-end Disney animatronic character created by an outside company for any Disney attraction. Prior to that, Imagineering had developed everything internally. So where can you find Garner Holt's work at Walt Disney World? Well, most of the audio animatronics in the Little Mermaid ride at Magic Kingdom were all made by Garner Holt, except for Ursula. She was made by Disney internally. Everything from Scuttle to Ariel, Sebastian, as well as everything in the finale was all built by Garner Holt. And they also built all the animatronics for the ride at Disney California Adventure. They're also responsible for building some of the animals on the Jungle Cruise at Magic Kingdom, and even Bird on a Stick at Expedition Everest. Across all the Disney parks in the world, Garner Holt Productions is responsible for about 450 animatronic figures. Disneyland in California is where most of their work can be seen. They built Harold and the Matterhorn, the Dragon and Fantasmic, 12 characters in Radiator Springs Racers including Doc Hudson and Sally and Lightning McQueen. They also built all the monster characters except for Roz and Monsters Inc. Mike and Sully to the rescue, the Disney characters in It's a Small World, the characters in Finding Nemo Submarine Voyage, plus everything and anything that moves in Buzz Lightyear Astro Blasters. Garner Holt is an incredibly talented company, and they continue to work closely with Disney. But these animatronics they've built, would they be Disney animatronics still, or Garner Holt animatronics? So what's your favorite hidden secret or detail at Walt Disney World? I'd love to know! Leave a comment down below to start a conversation, and don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video!